Hey guys, this is Magic here. Yeehaw, spoilers, cowboys, let's go. You know what it is. First up, Terror of the Peaks. Ooh, it's a Red Mythic. Are we going to see the classic, terrible, unplayable Red Mythic? They really have kind of fallen off of that tradition lately, and it, it I, I miss it. Let's see, 5-4 for 5 flying, spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks cost additional 3 life to cast, that literally is just ward, except you have to pay it in, in order to cast it, in addition to the cost? Instead of paying it to not get countered, I guess that's a slight difference. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Yeah, I know, that's kind of overpowered as balls. Awesome. Next up, Outcaster Trailblazer. Um, that's a big boy. Well, they got big cacti and uh, big lizards, all right. So it's a three cost uh, green 4-2 creature human druid, and when Outcaster Trailblazer enters the battlefield, add one mana of any color to mana pool. Okay, so like a little one and done, that's cool. Whenever another creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under control, draw a card. Ooh, that's powerful in the current just green fatties. I just played against it on Arena. It's still, you can just wreck it with control, but there's some backup enchantments that really make it competitive. This would be pretty good too for three. Then it has plot three. So you may cast this for three and then cast it at sorcery speed on a future turn without paying its mana cost. I guess if you just want the mana later, like a delayed ramp, you don't need a 4-2 right now. It makes it a pretty good card. Not like earth shattering, but good. Uh, next up, we got the Roadrunner. You already saw the Coyote. Ha ha ha. Yeah, they did that. Um, two cost, two, two in red. Haste protection from Coyotes. You've got to be kidding me. Um, they might as well just written Acme on the other card. <laughs> Pay three. Resilient Roadrunner can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. And they didn't have the balls to put Meep Meep on the, on the flavor text, really? Next up, we got Opossum Nomad. He do be a large boy, too. What the heck? So three cost, three, three. Oh, I just realized it's in French. You know what? Screw it. So it's a creature monster opossum uh, at jacket strength that the opossum nomad attacks without question is tapped. It gains plus one plus two justified the end of the tour when you put return oh when you perform the return dance duh um god people are either really angry or laughing their ass off right now i know i'm what i'm doing between takes of something proprietary and imported that name of creatures that taint tapped go on a, a tour of the sea seller one <laughs> Wow, what a great card. That Whatever I just read, that's that's great. So next up, we got Shifting Grift. I would apologize, but you're the one who's French, okay? You should apologize. Anyway, uh, we got two blue plus, so um, you got to add two to it if you want to exchange control of two target creatures. Now, you can choose one or more, by the way. Uh, add an additional one or just one or whatever you want. Exchange control of two target artifacts. And then plus one, uh, exchange control of two target enchantments. So this is the one that Mark was alluding to. I think this is just a fun card. Anything that clones or like casts something out of their deck or their graveyard or like within reason, you're beating them with their own cards and their own strategy, but without full access to their deck. So how much can they really complain? You know, if you swap a piece of crap one, one bird for a giant overpowered dinosaur from hell, who's really behind that dinosaur? Who put the dinosaur in their deck? You know what I mean? Next up, three steps ahead, because every cowboy sci-fi crossover needs time travel. Uh, so it's one blue plus, spree of course, uh, add one blue and one generic, and it's counter target spell, so literally just cancel, which means this is now better than cancel, but there's a lot out there better than cancel, come on. But if you add three, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, that's pretty spicy for four, especially with only one of it being blue, that's that's pretty hot. And then uh, plus two, draw two cards and discard a card. And remember, if you had one plus two plus three plus two, you could do all three of those. Or, like, any mix for a little bit less. I mean, that's just how it works. These spree cards are, like, good. You gotta pay more to get more, but they're just good. They scale. They're early game. They're late game. They're just nice. They're flexible. They're practical. I love this mechanic. The mechanics in this whole set are, like, solid. Saddle was absolutely brilliant. That cast it later, but only at sorcery speed thing, that, that's, that, that's so much better than suspend. I cannot wait to draft this. 
Uh, next up, Binding Negotiation. It's a two-cost black sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose an online card from it. If you do, they discard it. Otherwise, you may put a face-up exile card they own into their graveyard. The last time I saw that, it was an anti-Eldrazi method, but okay... And then we've got Malcolm, who we already knew was in here. I think he's actually on two cards, or we just already leaked this. I don't remember. I mean, two, two for two. Is it colors flying haste whenever you cast your second spell each turn to investigate? That sounds familiar. I think I already covered it. Then we've got Destrier Serifique. I legitimately thought Lathiel was in this set, because why not? It doesn't even have to make sense at this point. Hate to break it to you, but it's just Seraphic Steed. So it's a two-cost green-white a unicorn mount, okay. First strike and lifelink. Oh, I like that. And whenever it is saddled, uh, create a 3-3 three, three white angel creature token with flying. What did I just call saddled a second ago? I'm pretty sure I didn't call it saddled. Eh, whatever. I don't know. I'm sleep deprived. So saddle four, that's kind of high. I mean, it already has first strike and lifelink. Just put some equipment counters on it. But making it a 3-3 three, three and giving it flying, I mean... All right, and then any kind of angel boost, I guess. I don't, I've never seen an angel deck with a like green mixed in. At least not in standard constructor. You can build anything in eternal or modern, but uh, yeah, this is, this is kind of neat. If you can pull off the colors, it's neat. Ooh, next up we got another mythic. It's Bristly Bill, Spine Sower. Every Western needs a guy named Bill. That's, that, that's just the law. So two, two for two in green. Landfall, hello. Did not expect that. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Ooh. And then if you pay five, double the number of 1-1 one, one counters on each creature you control? Each? Permanently? With no way to stop that. When we get three years of cards and rampant green is out of control. That really seemed like a good idea to you, wizards. And it's not even restricted to sorcery speed. I can't think of a more powerful card in the set than this. Kellen's pretty close, if I recall, but th this is the new high water mark right here. This is nuts. Ten bucks on pre-order, by the way. That even seems low to me. Next up, Prosperity Tycoon. It's four cost white, four two, human noble, and uh, when he answers the battlefield, create a mercenary. And uh, sacrifice, if you pay two, sacrifice a token. Prosperity Tycoon gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. Okay, so just, you know, a little mercenary enabler. Nothing too special, but he could be very annoying in uh, any kind of limited format, so that's why they put him in Uncommon. Rares are good, but for this set, I'm telling you with what I've seen so far, you're going to have to look to the Uncommon slot first. That is where all the power and synergy is. Uh, but next up, we got Vadmeter New Blood, because of course we've got to have Cowboy Vampires. Uh, two cost, black 2-2, two, two, legendary creature, vampire rogue. And whenever you commit a crime, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Vadmir. This ability triggers only once each turn. As long as Vadmir has four or more 1-1 one, one uh, one, one counters on it, it has menace and lifelink. Oh, that's a buildup. This is good. I'm glad they put this in the rare slot. You put this in the common slot, nobody's drafting any other color. Next up, another stupid vampire, Desperate Bloodseeker. This one's in the common slot. Uh-oh. 2-2 two, two for 2 with lifelink. That actually, that affects um, draft a lot. When this card enters the battlefield, target player mills two cards. Okay, so you can load up your own graveyard, or you could, I don't know, try to mill them out. I, I don't know, there's almost no point to this, but whatever. Next up, the weirdest card I have seen so far, Lone Shark. Why is there a land shark walking around in this whack-ass town? He literally even has gills. I, I don't even get this at a fundamental level. And it looks like he's from Ixalan, too. So, four cost, three, four, and Shark Rogue. When Lone Shark enters the battlefield, if you've cast two or more spells this turn, draw a card, and then plot four. That seems so stupidly unlikely. Th this I wouldn't even call it draft filler. This is just like, why does this exist? I guess solely for the plot, because y if you cast two spells, you sure as hell don't have four mana open. You know what, I just realized, I've been referring to this as like, you activate my trap card, ooh, look at this thing. You're exiling these face up. It doesn't say face down, it exile piles face up, so your opponent can see what you just preloaded into exile. They literally know it's coming. Next up, we've got Miriam, Herd Whisperer. I wonder what that human next to her's name is. So it's a two cost three two in white green, legendary creature human druid. And as long as it's your turn, mounts and vehicles you control have hexproof. Oh, goody. Whatever amount or vehicle you control attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Damn, girl ain't playing. That is overpowered as hell for two mana. Next up, Mobile Homestead. It's a 2 cost 3-3 three, three artifact vehicle. I bet it's an Oregon Trail reference. And, uh, oh, it's an actual vehicle. Huh, with crew too. Why not? Uh, it has haste as long as you control a mount. <laughs> 
Why? <laughs> Whatever mobile homestead attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it on the battlefield tapped. Crew 2. I mean, that's not bad, but like, why mix crew with saddling? Saddling is the better version. Next up, Hard Bristle Bandit. It's a two cost green 1-1, one, one, but you can tap them for any color. And wow, whenever you commit a crime, untap Hard Bristle Bandit. But only once each turn. So next up, Free Strider Lookout. Um, I've already seen this card by accident and I hate it, so just brace yourself. 3-3 um, three, three for 3 with Reach, Human Rogue, Green, okay, cool. Whatever you commit a crime, look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped, put the rest on the bottom of your library, and pretend to put them in a random order. This ability triggers only once each turn. So this set with all the landfall and go fetch a land and recurring land drop and all that stuff... It just took the other, like, 2.7 years of magic, or whatever the hell it is, and sped it up. We didn't need it to speed up. It was fast enough. It's already too fast. It's already too powerful. This is ridiculous. So next up, Caught in the Crossfire. It's two red plus, uh, Spree, of course, plus one. Caught in the Crossfire deals two damage to each outlaw creature. Nice. I love it. Assassins, Mercenaries, Pirates, Rogues, and Warlocks are outlaws. And then plus one, Caught in the Crossfire deals two damage to each non-outlaw creature. How dare you? No, 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 we gotta burn the criminals. It's the only way to, you know, have a chilling effect on the rest of them, is burn them alive horribly while the others watch. And then make newspaper articles about it, with pictures. Vote for me, King of the Wild West 2024. So next up, we got Fleeting Reflection. Oh god, here we go. So it's a two-cost blue instant. Okay, can't be that bad then. Target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Untap that creature until end of next turn. It becomes a copy of up to one other target creature. Oh, ho, ho. That is going straight into my white, blue, don't attack me or you're going to regret it multiplayer commander deck. This is so amazing. Next up, we've got Lassoed by the Law. It's a four cost white enchantment. I bet this is going to be a reprint of that move around exiling thing or pin down or whatever uh, from, uh, what was that, RTR? One of the first cards I ever played with, by the way, in my first deck I ever built. But uh, when Lassoed by the Law enters the battlefield, Exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Lasso by the Law leaves the battlefield. When Lasso by the Law enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 red mercenary token. Oh, that's just stupid then. That's just filler. I don't like that. Um, next up, Dressius Desdemnis. Do I really want to go look this one back up? It's a 5-cost blue-white 1-4 uncommon with flash, huh? I believe it says um, at the start of the last vape... If you're naive enough to pass the lance to Chosen Deputy over the main tour, think of one jet of creature, 2-2 two -two White Spirit, Vivek for President 2024. I'm not sure how that works, but I kind of like it. Oh, for God's sake, another French one. God, I can only do the joke so many times. This is Visage Bandit. It's a four-cost blue shapeshifter rogue. You may have Visage Bandit enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control, except it's a shapeshifter and a rogue in addition to its other types. Now, only stuff you control. We have that one that'll do it, plus uh, put a shield on it. But this does have plot three, so you can load this up early, but, like, not too early. I'd rather have a shield, and that shield card can actually, for four mana in blue, clone one of your opponent's creatures without even technically targeting it. Next up, it's Bonnie. Who gives a crap? It's Blue Cow. Blue Cow. Check it off your bingo list. There it is. The one thing I wanted out of this set. It was the first thing that was leaked to me by weird anonymous sources, but so many that I couldn't possibly deny it. It's a big old blue cow, or a, probably a big blue ox name. Uh, I thought I'd think of it mid-sentence. Hold on. Babe. <laughs> That's who it was. In case you're not into stupid American folklore. Which they've now just put in Woman Face, which is where they take a big, burly, manly character and make it a woman for no goddamn reason. So it's double blue because duh, cow, plus one green, plus three generic for a 6-5 legendary creature giant, giant scout with reach. And when Bonnie Pal Clear Cutter enters the battlefield, create bow, really, <laughs> a legendary blue ox, a creature token, this is really blurry, creature token with the creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. Okay, that's nuts. And this is in, like, classic landfall, like, hydroid crisis decks, or if I gave everybody PTSD by naming that card. Uh, whenever you attack, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. That's right, Evolving Wilds. I think Scapeshift is also legal. Yeah. I mean, it's powerful, but it costs six. But it'll be in a landfall deck, so it might as well not cost six. Yeah, this will be a menace. 
Next up, we've got Aloe Alchemist. It's a two-cost green 3-2 creature plant warlock with trample. Non-legendary and in the uncommon slot, in case you were curious about what the power level is now. But wait, when it becomes plotted, target creature gets plus three, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn, and then plot two. That is so stupidly overpowered. Come on. I hate it. That's so broken. Next up, Thunder Lasso. It's a three-cost white equipment. This better be good. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. It's only equipped two, so whatever, but equipped creature goes plus and plus one, and then whenever equipped creature attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. Don't underestimate that, it's pretty damn good. Next up, Bruised Harl, Roving Rancher. And Full Metal Alchemist character, I'm pretty sure, but uh, okay. It's a four cost, uh, red, white, four, three, legendary creature, human warrior, ox, and you control of double strike. My dude, let's go. Whenever Bruised Harl, Roving Rancher enters the battlefield or attacks, exile the top card of your library. If it's a land card, create a 2 2 white ox creature token, otherwise, you may cast it until end of your next turn. I guess we're doing two color ox tribal then. I said I'll build it, I'll build it. Next up, Outcaster Green Blade. Ooh. It's a three cost green one two creature human mercenary. When outcast or green blade enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card or desert card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Told you. Uh, outcast or green blade gets plus one plus one for each desert you control, which could get out of control dang quick. Next up, stubborn burrow fiend. It's a 2-cost green 2-2 two, two badger beast mount, and whenever stubborn burrow fiend becomes saddled for the first time each turn. I don't know why you do it for the second time, but okay. Mill two cards, then Stubborn Burrow Fiend gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Saddle two. Yeah, you can just tap a row of two twos and do it over and over and over. That's what they said the first time. This is just, it's solid. It's just a good card. Uh, next up, Riku of Many Paths. Also not from the Commander series. Okay, all right, because it's partially three color. So one green, one blue, one red, the most fabulous flamboyant colors, and wouldn't you look at that art. Legendary creature, human wizard, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a modal spell, which is one with, like, options, uh, choose up to X, where X is the number of times you chose a mode for that spell. So basically their version of, uh, I keep forgetting, that you know, that multimodal casting plus thing. Oh yeah, Spree. Uh, so exile the top card in your library until the end of your next turn you may play it. That's pretty good. Uh, put a 1-1 counter on Riku of Many Paths. It gains Trample till end of turn. That's really good. Uh, create a 1-1 Blue Bird creature token with flying. That's pretty good. Yeah, this is just a commander that they stuffed into standard, let's be honest. Next up, Kellen's ba Bandon Bite to Rit to 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 too many T's. Come on, my German brothers. What are y'all doing over there? Right, let me translate this. Hold up. Uh, my inherent special magic German genetics uh, tell me that this card says <laughs> legendary enchantment when, oh, Ke it's Kellen joins up. You may exile an online card with mana value three or less from your hand. If you do, it becomes plotted, even if it doesn't have plotted. Uh, whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under control, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. Oh, legendary is the mechanic is is gonna be pretty good. I think you'd be playing five color at this point, but it's looking pretty good. Well, that's about all I have time for today. It's already past my bedtime, and still gotta edit this. Probably post this tomorrow, but to you guys, that's today, so whatever. But uh, hey, thanks for watching. Watch for another spoiler shortly later today, and I'll see you guys next time.